Hello everyone, this is Blake of WorksDB71 back to talk about a little bit of Art Ensemble. I um, want to introduce a new favorite of mine that's playing uh, in the background now and it has been in the rotation here in the past couple of weeks. Um, something that I'm surprised that we haven't heard more about and, and I'll, I'll get to it soon. Uh, lots of you uh, who have been following me uh, know I came from a more classical oriented uh, listening musical background and have uh, dove um, <laughs> head first into jazz and more spiritual and free and improvised jazz as uh, of late and uh, one of the things that I've been trying to get into is uh, more of an understanding of some of the major groups that came out of the mid 60s and late 60s and of course the AACM uh, was one of them and one of the subgroups of the AACM uh, out of the, 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 the larger group in Chicago is the Art Ensemble. Uh, so what I'd like to do is um, I want to introduce uh, a piece, uh, a, a record um, I'll show right here, People in Sorrow, um, but I want to do it in, in kind of a, um, uh, a contrasting way um, with another piece that, that the Art Ensemble uh, released, which is somewhat similar in nature. Um, it's the, at the time it was called the, Rocha, the Roscoe Mitchell Art Ensemble. Conglipsius, uh, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, it's on Nessa, the Nessa label, uh, Nessa number two. Um, so, what we have is uh, a, a group of individuals, Roscoe Mitchell, of course, um, as can be uh, noted in the title here. Roscoe Mitchell, then Lester Bowie on trumpet, Malachi Favors mainly on bass. Uh, and in this uh, piece, there actually is a, a named drummer called Robert Crowder, which I don't know that much about. Um, but then this was uh, March 1968, and then by the time Nessa number three comes out, we are in July 1969, and we've added Joseph Jarman, uh, but there's no named drummer. So we have Roscoe, Joseph Jarman, Lester Bowie, Malachi Favors. Now again, just to be sure, what you're hearing in the background is people in sorrow. But well, I want to compare in contrast against Conglitches, which came out a year before. Now, both of them are uh, very long composed pieces. Uh, this has a uh, three solo pieces on one side, side A, and then Conglitches on side B. It takes up the whole side. Um, and it sounds um, sort of like what's going on here, um, but in a sense, more, I think there's more humor in it. I think there's more um, uh, kind of like poking fun at uh, mainstream jazz and stuff like that. So there's a lot of joking, a lot of licks and riffs and things that that you you will hear in bebop and post bebop kind of jazz thrown into the conglitious piece and and they kind of make fun of it so when i hear this um it's very it's very entertaining it, it's fun but i don't it's not serious to me it's well it's serious in the sense that it's it's a it's a uh, performed piece of music but i think overall the sense is um, that there you gotta approach this with some humor now on the front side like I said uh, there are three tracks uh, all solo pieces uh, a bass solo to start with then an alto saxophone solo and then a trumpet solo and of the three I think the trumpet solo is, is the best I, I really really am digging Lester Bowie's trumpet playing he's got a He's got a manner of playing and a style of playing that's really, really uh, easy to to 
I guess fall in love with. Um, uh, it's it, it's good, and if you've heard of some Lester Bowie, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. Now, I want to get to People in Sorrow. Um, this, um, a, a work that spans both sides, this one, one work, People in Sorrow, side A and B, um, as you can tell here, part one and part two. Um, this is not humorous. It's it's very serious uh, in the sense that uh, there is a, a uh, seemingly a very well defined structure that's being followed. It's not completely free, uh, although there are parts that are free improvised. Um, but um, in talking with uh, one of our dear friends, Teddy, and uh, in some emails with. Um, Another dear friend, Mike Johnston, uh, we we come to the conclusion, and and we we kind of like uh, the terminology that we use for this. We we call this musical theater. I mean, because when you listen to it closely from beginning to end, you're taking on a very very well-spun uh, experience, really, a theater that goes on in your head. Now, don't confuse that with soundtrack or, or theater music. It's not theater music um, because it is entirely uh, self-sufficient. You don't need a visual. This is provides all of the visuals, especially with the colors uh, that the little instruments that they use, you know, all the, the weird smaller instruments that the art ensemble is very well known for using. Um, another term that I'd like to use is, uh, I, this is, I don't want to say that it's classical music. It's not classical music. Uh, I don't want to uh, put it down by calling it classical music, and I mean that in the nicest kind of way to all you classical musical music lovers. Um, but I, I will say that this is kind of like a very long extended tone poem in the sense that you're given a lot of sound colors and sound impressions that can build uh, the tensions and and help you along the journey that, that they are providing and, and what they call in this work, People in Sorrow. Um, you do come away with it after it ends, um, kind of in a very contemplative, um, uh, questioning kind of sense, like, yeah, you've seen something, but you, you, you have questions about it, and you want to learn more, and, and you feel maybe even a little blue about it. Uh, if that was their intent, that certainly worked for me. Um, back to a comment I made earlier, why, why don't we see this more often? Um, I am baffled after hearing this. Uh, I put this on par, or even better, than the Love Supreme, or the Kind of Blue, or, you know, these, these must-have jazz pieces, um, why People in Sorrow is not uh, religiously repressed and, and always made available baffles me. Uh, after hearing it the first time, I was stunned. I didn't know what to. I didn't know what to think about it. Did I? Did I make this up in my head? So I played it again, and then immediately fired out an email to you know again to Teddy and Mike, saying, "What? Where has this been? Why aren't people talking about it?" So now I'm talking about it, and I want you to hear it. So. If you dig this kind of music at all, free, improvised, uh, out music, uh, music that um, goes beyond mainstream jazz, the, the really good stuff that was happening in the late 60s, seek this out. People in Sorrow. There, this is like the first um, American edition made by Nessa. This was originally pressed and released in France, I believe. Uh, uh, Pathé, I think, um, 
Pathé EMI, maybe, I think a combination there. Uh, so, and then there was a later Nessa printing, pressing, I think in the 80s, early 80s, that has like yellow writing and a yellow image here. Um, so you can find it. It's, it's a little more costly. Um, if you find anything in, like this in a thrift store, definitely pick it up. Uh, I think you will be very good to do so. And I do believe there was a CD reissue of it early in, in uh, maybe the 90s um, for you CD fans out there. So here's the back of it. Um, again, musical theater, music theater for the mind. Uh, that's a, the best term I can call it. Uh, a beginning to end listening experience that, that I think is uh, a very rewarding to those that are interested. Now back to Conglipsius. Uh, again, an entertaining piece to me, very humorous, uh, there seems to be some jokes and stuff going on in it, uh, not to be taken very seriously, but um, a very enjoyable listen uh, nonetheless, especially comparing it to the next release when they uh, started calling themselves the Art Ensemble of Chicago. Uh, Nessa number three, People in Sorrow. Very, very uh, highly recommended. And uh, for those of you that know this, please comment and uh, let me know what you think about it. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to, to answer what I know and, and try to ask around for those things that I don't know. So I'm going to let you have it now, and um, we'll come back again very soon with probably a focus on whatever I happen to pick up and, and be interested in. So thanks very much and uh, we'll see you again next time around. Bye-bye.